everyone. Welcome to another episode of the Lofty Loops Yarns podcast. I am your host, Allison. I am the hand dyer behind Lofty Loops Yarns and the host of this semi-mostly weekly podcast uh, here on YouTube. You can find me online as Lofty Loops on Instagram, and that's where I am most active. Uh, however, I am also on Facebook if you would like to follow me there. All of the links to find me will be down below. Um, and there's also a Ravelry group for the podcast. And now that I mentioned that, that reminds me that I need to draw a winner of our giveaway from last week. Um, so let me pause for a moment and I'm going to check that out right now. Uh, last week on the podcast, Yarnia Designs was so sweet to offer some pattern giveaways uh, here on the podcast. So I had opened a thread and asked you guys to share with me what you're reading now, what your favorite book is, maybe your favorite book or the book you're reading now is not your favorite. Um, or if maybe you're not reading anything right now, uh, what do you plan on reading? Because I am a huge reader. Um, and so you guys definitely gave me tons of suggestions. Um, you guys have, I've read quite a few of the ones that you guys had mentioned. Um, but I have also added uh, quite a few to my to read list. So that was really fun. And uh, by entering in the Ravelry thread and telling me uh, all about the books that you're reading or have read, you were entered to win um, there were two different patterns up for grabs. One of them is the Galactic Rainbow Shawl, and I shared that last week on the podcast, a photo of it. So if you're interested in seeing what that looks like, you can pop over to the Ravelry group, um, and then I've linked to the pattern there, or you can check out last week's podcast to see a photo. Um, and the other one was the Cottage Garden Socks. So Siri has just randomly drawn post number four and post number eight, and I will put your names uh, down here at the bottom. Um, and it looks like post number four is So Mama Five. So congratulations, So Mama Five. You have won a uh, the Galactic Rainbow pattern, um, which is a beautiful brio shawl. Um, I definitely am going to be casting it on soon. So if you would please send me a message on Ravelry, um, letting me know that you've seen this, uh, and then I will get a hold of Yarnia Designs and have her shoot that over to you. And then post number eight was Yarnbender One. So congratulations, Yarnbender One. You have won a cottage garden sock pattern, um, and those are another one that are definitely on my short list in my queue. So again, if you would get a hold of me on Ravelry, let me know that you've seen this and that you are the winner of the pattern. Um, I will get those to you guys ASAP. So thanks again for entering and a huge thank you to Yarnia Designs for sharing those with us. Um, there, she's a beautiful designer. I highly suggest um, you checking out the rest of her Ravelry store because I had a heck of a time trying to pick um, the ones that I loved the most because I want them all. <laughs> All right, so that was jumping into a bit of admin. Um, I am whipping through this fairly quickly, it seems. Um, I'm kind of all over the place. I had show notes at one point. I don't know where they've gone. Um, but it is October, it's October 15th. Um, it is a Monday. I am typically not home on Mondays, but it is fall break, so the kiddos are home, and we had plans on going out of town this weekend. Um, but then, unfortunately, um, we had to say goodbye to our cat after uh, having her for almost 12 years, so we just didn't really feel like um, doing much of anything over the weekend. We just kind of hung around home and bummed around, and I took the opportunity to kind of catch up on things. Um, so a bit of a staycation, if you will, even though we staycade um, with some heavy hearts, but um, thank you to everyone that has reached out if you uh, were following along on Instagram and maybe reached out to me there um, or reached out here on YouTube because you saw on Vlogtober, um, which I am attempting to do this month. Um, I appreciate all your kind words and all your thoughts and all your virtual hugs. Um, it means a lot to me, so thank you guys. Let's get on with the knitting content. Uh, if you are here for the first time, welcome. This is a knitting podcast where I talk mostly about knitting, 
Uh, I'll share some of my hand dyed yarn. I'll, sta I'll share my acquisitions, uh, the fibery kind, and um, a little bit of spinning from time to time. However, there has not been much spinning lately. Unfortunately, I really need to kick my own butt and sit back down in front of my wheel. Um, but yeah, otherwise just kind of sometimes there's random crafty bits of whatever the heck I get my hands on. Uh, but the majority of what I will be chatting to you guys about will be knitting. Trying to get my wits about me here. Let's see. I am hosting a new knit along. Um, it is uh, co-hosted with Melinda of Rye Flower Knits and Lindsay of Charmed Yarns. And it kicked off on the 10th, I believe. So we've been at it a full week now, but it is the Stitch in Time Cal. And a Stitch in Time is a gorgeous uh, double pattern from Melinda of Rye Flower Knits. You can find that in her Ravelry store. I'll leave links down below in the show notes. Um, but you can, it's either a, um, asymmetrical shawl or there is a cowl um, and you get both of them when you purchase the pattern so it is a set and it is all in just one purchase um, I'm not going to go through all of the rules and regulations and things um, because I did that last week um, but I will leave a link down below to the Ravelry thread where you can find all that information but essentially if you want to knit either the shawl or the cowl um, you can knit those along with us um, and there are three places to enter into the cowl. There's my Ravelry group, there is Melinda's Ravelry group, and then there is Lindsay's Ravelry group. So you can definitely triple dip into all of those. I believe we all have chatter threads so you can chat away as much as you want in any of those. Yes, if you knit both patterns uh, before November 30th, then you can enter into the cowl twice in the finished object threads. There are three, uh, one in each group. And if you use either some of my, uh, my yarn, Lofty Loops yarns, or you use some of Lindsay's Charmed yarns, um, you will be entered extra entries or you will be able to have extra entries if that makes sense. So I think we worked it out and there are literally if you do all of the things uh, which is not a requirement but if you want to shoot for the stars and do all the things you can actually enter into the win into win the cal 18 times. That's huge you guys. So uh, each thread will have their own uh, prize in the end. So we are still working those out a little bit, but it's going to be a heck of a good time. And I will share my progress on the shawl here soon. So definitely check that out if you're interested. It's just, it's, I can tell you that the pattern is, has been an absolute joy to knit. Um, the original pattern that Melinda came up with, she used three colors from Lindsay's shop and they are gorgeous. They're stunning. They just got my, they hit the inspiration, um, bone. Is that a thing? <laughs> they hit, they made, guys, struggle bus. It's fine. You know what I mean? They are very inspiring. They're beautiful colors. Um, and I believe she is selling kits in her shop. So if you want to make um, one in the exact same colorways, then I definitely suggest running over and checking those out. Alrighty, uh, I have a finished object this week, so I am so excited. How long has it been since I was able to share a finished object? I'm just going to throw it on a blocker real quick. Um, ends are actually woven in, um, however, it has not had a proper bath and blocking yet, so oh, I forgot one end. <laughs> There's one end that I either forgot to snip off or forgot to weave in. Oopsies. Just tuck that away and you guys won't even know. Except I just told you. Okay, so I finished my Desert Vista Dye Work socks and I am so excited. These have actually... They've been done and waiting for heels, um, gosh, for probably a week, two weeks now at this point. Um, and I just, I was procrastinating putting the heels in. Um, they are an afterthought heel. And I actually showed a little bit of my process um, on one of my Vlogtobers. I can't remember which one for sure, but if I do remember, I'll, whoop, this way, I'll put it up here for you guys. Um, 
But if you're very interested, again, I'll link it up here, but I actually have a whole tutorial here on my YouTube channel of how I cut in my afterthought heels so you can watch that process. Um, but yeah, I just, I had some leftover, um, a little Lolo from Lolo Did It, and I can't remember the colorway. Oh, shoot. I can't remember the colorway off the top of my head, but I purchased it when I got her uh, Hippo for Thanksgiving colorway last year last year for last Thanksgiving. Um, so I did, I used it for the contrasting color on those socks um, and I had a little bit left over. I had it in my bag to throw in my Bits and Bobs blanket, but I thought the orange would um, go really well with these. So there you have it. Again, this is Desert Vista Dye Works and the colorway is Zombody Walking on the Sun. This is my first ever skein of Desert Vista Dye Works, and I must say that I absolutely had so much fun um, working on these. They're just, they're so bright, they're so happy. Um, they're just so much fun. Uh, I did knit these cuff down, which um, I'm sure if you follow me on Instagram or if you've been uh, watching the podcast for a little while, you've seen the progress, but these were cuffed down with a two by two rib. Um, I want to say a 68 stitch sock, um, because I believe I knit these on US ones. Um, and then of course the afterthought heel, and then I just do a normal, um, is it a square toe? Maybe? I don't know the proper word. Um, they almost, almost match almost but that's okay um they're really fun i need to get them uh in the bath i need to get them blocked because i really think that they would be the perfect fall socks and while we did get surprise snow yesterday thanks nebraska um it's still fall in my heart and uh will continue to be fall probably until december and that is the only time when I think it is acceptable to have snow on the ground is in December. So anyway, I'm not going to talk about the weather because it's just depressing. Um, so yeah, Desert Vista Dye Work socks all done. Finally. Um, I don't know why it took me so long to get those heels on, but but it did. Um, that is all I have as far as finished objects. I, however, do have something that is also very close, so I'll start with that. Um, these, again, are just waiting for heels at this point, but I did finish um, the tubes of my Crazy Sock Lady socks. So this is still technically a work in progress because there are no heels. Um, however, the majority of them is done. Uh, these were... Um, these were knit on my US 2s, and I wanna say probably a 64 stitch. Um, when I knit 2s, I, I usually do a 64. These I knit toe up, um, because if you are, <laughs> if you're viewers of the podcast uh, or have been viewers for a while, you'll know that I, pfft, there's no rhyme or reason. It's just whatever I feel like. I, the time, uh, whether I cast on for the cuffs or cast on for the toes, but these were knit toe up. Um, I again, up, up here, I'll link to my uh, toe up sock tutorial if you guys are interested in checking that out to see how I do it. Um, these are relatively close as far as striping goes, but again, not exactly, and I'm okay with that. Um, and I haven't decided yet on the contrast color that I wanna put in for the heels. Um, but I think I may just use this. Um, I think I may just keep with the same yarn, um, which I should mention the yarn is um, the, the Crazy Sock Lady uh, Striping Colorway by uh, Tiny Human Knits. Oh my goodness, Laura of Tiny Human Knits. Um, and it's so soft, it's so squishy, it's just, I want this as sleeves. I want, I want this, I want this ginormous on my body. <laughs> but I'm really excited to almost have them uh, as socks that I can wear on my feet. So 
Hopefully, maybe here in the next couple days, I will actually put the heels in. Hopefully I won't procrastinate with them as long as I did my Desert Vista Dye Works. Um, but I'm pretty excited that I am going to have two brand new pairs of striped socks to wear. Um, again, a two by two rib, which is what I do for all of my cuffs. And this one, I didn't necessarily count um, the rows for the cuff. I just did a full repeat of the four color repeat on here. So, um, yeah, not much else to say. I think these are gonna be quite long um, when I compare them to some other socks, but I was just having so much fun watching the colors knit up that I just kept going. So hopefully they'll be able to fit over my chunky calves. Um, but yes, anyway. That is, that is that, my almost second finished object. I really wanted to have it finished um, for the podcast, but once I, I cut in those other heels and knit those, I just, I couldn't, I was not feeling doing it two more times <laughs> at that moment in time, so uh, hopefully soon. And this is what I have left of the gobstopper, which um, to be honest is plenty. There's there's quite a bit here. So um, I don't think I, I don't think I weighed it quite yet because I wanna wait until I do the, the heels with this um, and then I'll see how much I used. Um, and if, oh, I didn't bring it down with me, but uh, the Desert Vista Dye Work socks, I think I have almost 40 grams left of that skein, so probably get another shorty pair out of those. Um, yeah, there's quite a bit left of that colorway as well. So, all right, next work in progress. Speaking of striped socks, these have been in hiding for a while. Um, I've shared them on the podcast maybe once or twice, and I don't know, they just, they keep getting tossed to the wayside, um, which is really a shame because these are beautiful socks. Um, I just have been really, I don't know, I guess I've been really distracted by all the other ones. Um, but again, I'm really feeling stripes lately. So this is Valkyrie Fibers and it is the, I bought the Jaeger Bomb set. Um, so I love Jaeger. That is my liquor of choice if I am drinking. Um, I can literally, I will drink it pinkies up, like just sip. I know people give me crap about it all the time. Um, but I just, I don't know, I love Jaeger. Um, people look at me like I'm insane and that's fine. However, uh, I did see on Instagram when she posted the set and I could not buy it because guys, Jaeger bombs. Um, so these are being knit toe up. And it is a modified pinstripe sock pattern, I believe. Um, I'll link to Ravelry um, so you guys can see for sure. I believe I linked the pattern on there. Um, this little stitch marker here, if I can flip it around, struggle bus, uh, is from Little Bitty Delights. And it is one of those peanut butter kiss cookies, which are my absolute favorite. Um, and it matches perfectly, so that little guy has been hanging out on there for quite a while. Uh, but you can see the pinstripe socks, it's just working uh, a slip stitch every other row. Um, and I say modified because I'm not, I can't remember if the pattern is knit toe up, which I'm not sure it makes much of a difference either way. Um, and I had a different stitch count than what the pattern called for because I am knitting these on ones. So I believe there are 68 stitches. So I had to do a little bit of math um, to figure out how many stitches in between the slip stitch stripes. So yeah, um, the only thing that bugs me just a smidge is when I did the uh, Fishlets Kiss Heel and I added the uh, contrasting color yarn. I held it together like I normally do um, to kind of weave in that end. So you can see just a little bit of the green um, from the heel, but that's easy enough to go back and pick out and then reweave in. Uh, but this mini came with the set and it is the green color of a Jaeger bottle if you're unfamiliar. Um, so just a really, 
really bright tonal green. Um, and again, this is the Fish Lips Kiss heel I used on this one. So um, it's if you're unfamiliar with the Fish Lips Kiss heel, it's a short row heel. It costs $1 on uh, Ravelry, and I highly, highly recommend it. So. So yeah, I have just been working away on these. Um, I have told myself I cannot cast on any other socks until this one is at least off the needles. Um, and this is the first one, so I would have a whole second one to knit. Um, but I am re-falling in love with the patterning. Um, because it's it's like a vanilla, but it's it gives you just a bit of extra, um, if you will. So. Again, Valkyrie fibers, and I am knitting these on my US ones, DPNs. Um, yeah, and hopefully, hopefully I will stop ignoring this project and actually finish it up soon. Ice water. Stay hydrated, friends. The uh, next project that I want to share is my uh, test knit that I'm doing for Bad Wolf Girl Sets and Knits, or Meg. Um, in Bad Wolf Girl Studios. If you're unfamiliar, she has a podcast. She's fantastic. Please go check her out. She also dyes beautiful yarn and she is now a pattern designer. So she reached out a while back and wanted to know if I would test knit her sea glass top and I said absolutely. Yes, I will. So I have been working away on that. So it is going to be a tank there are no sleeves, um, and it is a racer back tank, which is really fun. So hopefully you can see it a bit better than the last time I shared it. Um, but it's on tiny needles right now, so it is a little bit difficult to show. Um, but I am about halfway through about halfway through the um, increases and then there's just a little bit of lace patterning at the bottom edge and then there will be a really pretty um, edging that's going to go around the neck and armholes so I am knitting this out of um, Madeline Tosh in the Danger Will Robinson solid colorway. And this is her Euro sock. So really pretty. This is the first skein. Uh, this is all I have left of that first skein. I definitely have two more. However, I probably will only need um, one um, and probably not the whole thing. I believe she said she wants to release this around Halloween. Um, so keep an eye out on her Instagram. And I, of course, will try to share um, when I know as well. And then that means I need to get this done in the next week or two. Pressure's on. Um, but again, it's beautiful. I'm really going to enjoy wearing it. I think it's going to be an awesome color to wear. Um, and it'll be really nice to be able to layer um, under another cardigan or a jacket, something like that. So I have a adorable little beaded stitch marker from Hannah of the Corner of Craft on here. Um, it's not necessarily tracking any progress. It's just cute and it makes me smile. And last but not least, uh, a project I want to share with you guys this week is, of course, the A Stitch in Time shawl um, that I am knitting for the cowl I am co-hosting. So before I show you my progress, and it is living in this gorgeous bag, I did kick my Find Your Fade out of the bag so I could use it. <laughs> um, this bag was made by uh, Rock Islander on Instagram. That is Mary Ann, and it was gifted to me um, in a giveaway that Plank and Stella was holding a few months back. So I love it. It's one of my favorites. This beautiful skein of Madeline Tosh in her Tosh Marina Light. 
and this is alizarin. Here we go. So alizarin and ooh, I got messy cakes, y'all. And then I have this other skein of Madeline Tosh, Tosh Merino Light, and this is the Modern Fair Isle colorway. So it's just a very creamy base with orange and red and gold speckles. And then to go along with those, I've pulled this skein of Cat Sandwich Fibers out of my fade kit that I purchased from her a while back. So it's just this really pretty orange color and it's got dark speckles, pink speckles. Um, it just, it went so well with these other colorways. And that was on her skinny, her skinny base. So it is 100% uh, superwash merino in a single ply. Cute, cute little tag. And it is on tiny little cables right now um, because I had to steal them off another project. Uh, however, I did just pick up a longer cable. So I will be getting that switched as soon as I can. Uh, but here's what I have so far. So again, it is a asymmetric shawl, so you start here at this point, and I am about just started my second repeat here of this second section. So get it up here. I love how autumnal the colorways are together. Um, I just I'm having so much fun with it. And this is just really pretty butterfly lace. And I am knitting these on my Chiaogu interchangeables, and this is a size 5. So, and like I said, tiny cord, uh, but I just bought a new one. But yeah, again, this is a pattern by Melinda of Ray Flower Knits. Um, and we are co-hosting a cal. So um, I would love to have you join us. Um, and again, you can either knit the shawl or the cowl um, or both. Um, and yeah, just just join us. There is a hashtag, which is hashtag a stitch in, a stitch in time cal. And then I'm also, uh, I have a coupon code on the website that you can use to save 15% if you're going to be knitting these along with us and you want to purchase some colors um, from the shop. And that is Stitch Cal. All right, that's all I have uh, as far as works in progress go. So now I'm just going to show you a smidgen of acquisitions or things that um, I received. I've been very good about making purchases because I will be heading to BKL uh, here in just a few weeks. So I am saving my pennies up uh, for hopefully grabbing a metric buck ton of yarn and things there. Um, <clears throat> so I'm trying to be really good about using stash and um, not making too many crazy impulse buys. Which I must say I did really well. Um, I guess this just I'll jump into this now. Um, I just went to Make It Take It here in Lincoln, Nebraska, and um, it is a craft place where you can go and you can purchase all the materials you would need to make a project, and you can actually sit there and make your projects. So if you're familiar with um, like Paint Yourself Silly or kind of the quirky canvas type places, um, it's essentially along those same lines. However, it is all of the crafts, everything you can think of. So they have paper crafts, they have um, wooden block painting things. They just, it's, you can go scrapbook, you can do nail art. Um, they have a sewing machine there that you can use, just loads of things. And recently they just started um, selling yarn or they have a whole yarn section there. So 
Um, I will try to pop in a snippet of what I saw when I was walking around there today. This is the first time I've been in since they added that yarn section. Um, so I of course had to scope it out, but they have a whole lovely wall of hedgehog fibers. And I don't think I've been anywhere physically where they had hedgehog fiber stocked. Um, so I'm always oogling over it online and then making purchases online um, and waiting for it to come in. So being able to see a whole bunch of it, pick it up, squish it, feel it, um, that was really exciting. So I'm really happy that they're gonna be having uh, hedgehog fibers. And I almost walked away with a skein of film noir, but I didn't, I did not. However, I will be back for it soon <laughs> after VKL um, because it's so pretty. Um, but I did, while I was there, I can only share a couple things because I did get um, some things to gift. So I don't wanna share them just yet um, or at all, I guess, because they will be heading out in my fiber share package. Um, but my friend Leslie, um, who is 28th Street on Instagram, she makes beautiful project bags, um, loads of polymer clay progress keepers, and now she has little notions pouches and DPN cozies, and um, she's awesome. She's such a sweetheart, and I know I've mentioned her here on the podcast before because I have one of her bags um, and her progress keepers. She made me some sushi progress keepers a while back that I just adore, um, but I picked up, here's her little a little tag and I'll take it out here so you guys can see it a bit better but I saw this and I was so intrigued and it is a dark moon so I was like is this is it like a little octopus what is this um, but then I saw it's a moon and I'm like oh duh of course it's a moon and it's very sparkly hopefully that will You can see it's got little craters on there. How cute is that? And this, it's not doing the glitter justice on here. So, oh, so cute. So I picked up uh, one of these from her. And then I also saw these little Notion pouches. And I had to get the Gryffindor one because guys, I've taken, I've taken the Pottermore test. I've gotten my house uh, selection and I am somehow a Gryffindor. I would like to say that I'm a nice mix between a Gryffindor and a Slytherin, um, but I guess that would be kind of a contradiction. But I'm a Gryffindor, so I grabbed the little Gryffindor pouch and again, there's her tag. And she is on Instagram. And then it also came with another little progress keeper. They did have a Slytherin, or she did have a Slytherin one there. Um, so I might go back and get it anyway. <laughs> um, but there's the inside. So yeah, this will just be a fun little pouch um, to keep uh, progress keepers or stitch markers or my darning needles that I lose literally all the time. Um, or, you know, it would make like a great little change pouch to throw in my purse. You could even put like cards in here or your ID. So yeah, it's really a great little size. So yeah, uh, I believe Make It Take It has everything for sale online. Uh, again, I'll link down to their website in the show notes. Um, but I think anything that they sell in the store you can purchase online also. I could be wrong. Please don't quote me on that. Um, but she has loads of things like this. So I'm sure if you really wanted to get your hands on some, she could hook you up. I did also, as I mentioned, I grabbed uh, a longer Chiaogu Twist interchangeable cable. So I, got a, I grabbed a 30 inch so I can get that shawl on a bigger cable. And then one last, uh, acquisition. So this is something that I purchased a 
very long time ago. Um, it feels like a very long time ago, um, shortly after she moved here to the States. So I have been pining over a homespun house and I love, love Molly's yarn. Um, and I've always, there's been many, many times that I've had it in my cart to purchase and I just, I didn't because shipping, um, because she, she was over in Germany. Uh, I'm sure you all are well aware. Um, but then I heard she was moving to the States and I was like, this is it. This is my chance. Um, here it comes. <laughs> here comes all of the homespun house yarn into my stash. Uh, but this was her September yarn and charm club. I think so. I'm sorry if I'm spoiling it for anyone. I shouldn't because it's literally October now. Um, however, it just showed up uh, within the last week. So I know she, if you, I'm sure you're well aware. And if you're not, please go watch her podcast and follow her on Instagram. Um, but I've been watching along in her Instagram stories and they just purchased a house. And so she was renovating the whole basement, getting it set up for her studio space. She has a dye area and then a inventory area and a shipping area and it's just like it's goals you guys um, so I know she's been busy getting all that prepped and ready to go and she is I believe she just had her shop relaunch uh, here in the States so um, I was very patient and waiting because I know she I know the struggle of moving and I can't even imagine moving countries um, so anyway it finally showed up and uh, here it is. So this is again the September Yarn and Charm Club and it is on her soft sock which is a 7525 and it is 470 yards for 100 grams and this is called Unicorn Magic. So I'm not quite sure what this will be, probably a pair of socks. And it's just beautiful. I mean, I fully expected just beautiful work from Molly, so I'm very happy. Super, super happy with it. Um, happy to finally have some Homespun House in my stash. And as I mentioned, it was the Yarn and Charm. So uh, she offers a Yarn and Charm Club and the charms come from Sucre Sucre Miniatures, which I've never purchased anything from her before. So again, I was very excited to receive this. But it is just a little cupcake with some frosting on top and a little candle. It's so cute. So like I said, that's all I have for acquisitions. Um, I've been very good. BKL is coming um, second weekend in November so I have about four three weeks left before I head out um, to VKL in Minneapolis and I'm so excited I can hardly stand it um, I am taking a couple classes up there I will be with a large group of ladies um, we are busing up there and it's gonna just be it's gonna be so much fun so I'm really looking forward to that I will try to vlog as much as I can of that um, if you're going to be at VKL, let me know. Um, I would love to uh, meet up with you and chat with you, um, whatever. I'm not a hugger, but I make exceptions. So <laughs> otherwise, I just want to chat just a few shop things um, as far as Lofty Loops Yarns goes. So I've been doing some soul searching and some uh, market research on Instagram and asked you guys um, but I will be discontinuing my sport base, so Lofty Sport. Um, once it's gone from the shop, it will not be restocked. Um, I don't know. I just, I feel I don't use it very much, and it sounds like you guys aren't using sport weights very much. Um, so I don't know what it is. Um, it is beautiful. I love the stitch definition. It just... It just doesn't seem like something that I should continue stocking in the shop. So there is quite a bit in the shop right now and I do have just a little bit more that I need to dye up and I will be adding to the shop shortly um, but I will not be 
ordering any more um, from my supplier to dye. So once it's gone, it's gone. And I guess it is what it is. You, I've, yep. <laughs> I would rather continue dyeing what you guys are wanting and um, what I enjoy working with and things of that nature. So um, I don't necessarily want to waste my time or your time at dyeing something that um, you just don't have much interest in. And then I just want to share with you a couple new colorways. Uh, I've been working on lots of wholesale orders, which is really exciting. Um, as I mentioned, one of them, a uh, big box of goodies, went over to Make It Take It here in Lincoln. So if you're in the area, you can head on over there and check it out. It will be there along with Hedgehog Fibers um, and lots of other beautiful, uh, <laughs> beautiful yarns. But... Um, Yes, in the meantime, while I was dyeing that up, I was playing around with some new colorways and re-dyeing some old colorways that I haven't even thought about in a very long time. Um, so let me just show you what I came up with. Okay, old colorway. This was one of the very first colorways I think I ever dyed when I decided I was a capital D dyer. Um, and I dyed the heck out of it and then moved on. Um, so I'm like, you know, I really need to bring it back. I really love it. Um, it was under a different name back then. It was actually called 700 Jumps Ain't Healthy Boy, which was an homage to uh, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 when they go through the hyper jump scene, if you guys are um, familiar with that movie. But essentially it's Yondu Rocket and Groot and they're all doing this like hyper jump in the ship and things get a little crazy. They do a few too many jumps. Poor Groot um, throws up all over himself. <laughs> um, <laughs> anyway, so uh, that was what this was inspired by and uh, I have since renamed it to Hyperdrive um, because that name was just too long, let's be honest. So if you guys have any of the 700 Jumps Ain't Healthy Boy, uh, congratulations. Uh, it, it's still the, it's the same colorway, it's the exact same recipe, same speckles, uh, everything, just a different name. So I love the speckles in this. They are bright blues, bright purples, bright pinks bright yellows. It's just a really fun colorway and I hope it's not blowing out too terribly. So this is heading to the shop again. This is on Lofty Sock. And again, uh, it is now called Hyperdrive. I will also be re-adding some Sayuri. And this is a really pretty semi-tonal, uh, almost watery blue, but it definitely has some speckles of a dark blue in there as well as some gray. And I don't know how well it will pick up on camera. There's a bit of the gray there. Um, but definitely check out uh, the shop and my Instagram if you want true to life colors. But this is just a really pretty colorway. Um, really delicate blue, um, really pretty. And then two new ones that I am so stoked about. Um, this one came about when I was dyeing up minis for the advent calendars. Um, and I knew that I, I liked where it was heading. So I decided to test it out on some full size skeins and tweak it just a smidgen. Um, and really happy I did because this is Juniper. Juniper is a really pretty soft bluey green with lots of speckles of browns and kind of a goldy green ochre color. So if you guys are familiar with um, juniper trees, it's very reminiscent of those colors. And this is on Lofty Sock. I will be dyeing it uh, up on some Lofty Singles and Lofty DK as well, and possibly some Lofty Sport since I have it in the shop. Uh, so keep your eyes peeled for that. And this one, you guys, has stolen my heart. And I am struggling not to keep this for myself. Uh, but this is Kindred. And it's 
just a beautiful autumnal colorway. Reds and browns and yellows. And there's some purpley colors in there. It's just golds. I can't even describe it. I need a sweater in this. Look at it. So this is Kindred. I don't think I have any currently in the shop, but it would be beautiful paired with Bronzed Beauty. It would be beautiful paired, well, it would be beautiful paired with Juniper. It would be really pretty paired with Honey too. Um, I just, I have all of the ideas, all of the ideas. Um, yeah, and I have been playing around with some Christmas colorways, which I'm not going to share just yet. I'm going to keep it a secret a little while longer. Let's get through Halloween first, shall we? Um, but yeah, I've been playing around with some new Christmas ideas, and um, I'm really excited to be able to share those with you. But in the meantime, it is still Halloween season. It is still October, even though we have snow on the ground. Um, so, of course, I have... Winifred Sanderson, Mary Sanderson, Sarah Sanderson, and Sally all in the shop. Sally Stripes, I believe there's still a couple listings up for Sally Stripes. If you want to get your hands on my striped colorway, all five of those will not be dyed past Halloween this year. So if you're wanting some, grab it now. Um, and then once Halloween stuff comes down, I will start uh, sharing the Christmas colorways with you guys. So see I've been blabbing for about 50 minutes now um, so I'll just do a little bit of chatter and then I will say goodbye for this week. Uh, I just finished reading Coraline so I watched I rewatched Coraline uh, last week I think I've been watching all of the fun Halloween movies um, Hocus Pocus of course I've watched Nightmare Before Christmas already once um, and then I watched Coraline um, and then I knew that Neil Gaiman wrote the original book and I just, I don't know why I've never read it. So I checked it out on Overdrive from the library um, and just finished that. And I must say the book is very awesome, very well done. Um, slightly different than the movie, but I definitely appreciate um, both. Uh, the, book was, the book was very good. So if you haven't read it yet, please do. Um, and then, of course, I restarted reading Outlander again. <laughs> um, so I am so excited that Outlander is coming back here in just a few weeks, the beginning of November. You guys, I need it. I need it so bad. I'm so ready for Outlander to come back. Um, so in the meantime, I am rereading the books again. Um, so I've started over with the first book, um, and this time instead of, I keep, I use Overdrive 99% of the time, which is a library app that you can get on your phone or your tablet or what have you, and you hook it up to your library card if you have one, and then you can check out eBooks, um, which is usually really fantastic. Um, you can also check out audiobooks that way for free. It's, it's through the libraries. Um, However, there are some books that I keep rechecking out, such as Outlander, and I just went ahead and um, I just bought it. I just, why not? I just bought it. So um, I now am reading that again, and now I can read it at my own pace, should I choose to, instead of having that 21 day needing to, you have to recheck in your ebook, or I should say that it automatically rechecks it in after 21 days, whether you're done or not. Um, so there were a few times when I was like, add me to the wait list, add me to the wait list, add me to the wait list. Um, so now I'm just like, no, you know what? I'm just gonna buy it. We have been watching Ozark on Netflix, um, which is a really good show. I recommend it. It's not for children. Um, there's a little bit of graphic violence and nudity to it, but it's very good. And we we power watched Big Mouth. Um, that is also not for children. It is a um, animated show. They're about 30 minute episodes. It's on Netflix. It's an original. Um, it's about uh, some boys and well, there's a few girls too. It's 
It's about a group of children going through puberty, and um, it is pretty raunchy, but pretty hilarious. Um, and there were definitely a few times where I covered my eyes or like had to pick my jaw up off the floor because I feel like I do not get shocked by many things, but holy moly. Um, Nick Kroll is one of the writers, if you are familiar with who that is. Um, I can't think of, can't think of the other guy, but um, if you're into kind of those like raunchy comedies, um, kind of like South Park-esque, um, definitely give it a watch. It's pretty hilarious. Anyway, I'm just blabbing at this point. I really have, um, I feel like I've been blabbing a lot lately because of Vlogtober, so I'm trying to vlog my days, and a lot of the times I feel like I don't have a lot to talk about, so I'm just kind of like rambling on um, in terms of maybe what I'm doing or what I'm cooking or what I'm thinking, what I'm feeling. <laughs> Um, so thank you for the people that are watching Vlogtober. Um, it's been fun so far, and I'm definitely going to continue it through the month of October. Um, but yeah, it's, it's been, it's been interesting, to say the least. Uh, so I have not been vlogging and getting a video up every single day. Um, it's been more of like every two or every three days. Um, but I'm at a point where I feel like I have about eight to ten minutes of content or so um, in, in a vlog. So even if it's maybe a couple days stuck together. Um, so yeah, it's been a lot of fun and I've shown a lot of my cooking endeavors on there. Um, uh, a lot of my coffee making because that's what I do. Um, and yeah, a lot of just what I'm working on. So if you're interested in Vlogtober, there is a playlist uh, on my YouTube channel where you can watch all of those in sequential, sequential order if you'd like. Um, and if you're not interested, I won't be offended at all. Um, but if you would like to have just a little bit of peek uh, into my life aside from the podcast, um, then definitely give it a look. It's been fun. Um, but anyway, I think that's where I'm going to leave you guys this week. Uh, I'm sure there's something I'm missing, but right off the top of my head, I can't think about it. Next time I will have show notes, so it's not such a cluster of an episode. Um, but anyway, I hope you guys have a fantastic rest of your week. I hope that um, the snow stays away from you guys. Unless you want it, then you can have it. Take it all. Um, and I will chat with you guys soon. Happy knitting. Bye.